Hey everyone, it's Scar, and I've got another solid Nightblade build that I have been genuinely enjoying so much. This thing hits really hard, and I just absolutely love how much this is just deleting health bars. This is probably one of my favorite builds that I've had in a long time, so I hope that you guys enjoy. Real quick, if you are not, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel, and also just hitting that thumbs up, hitting that like button really helps me out a lot. I would highly appreciate that. All right, guys, so without further ado, let's get started. It's going to be our overall superstar add-on for this. If you want to just pause it and just look at everything, you're more than welcome to do so, but I am going to explain everything bit by bit. We're going to be a Khajiit on our Nightblade. In my opinion, Khajiit is best in slot just because of that simple crit passive. In my opinion, that just goes hand in hand with Nightblade and is just so unbelievably solid. We're also going to have 62 points into health and 2 points into magic to give us a max health pool of 31.9k and a max magic pool of 19.1k as well as a max stamp pool of 16.3k. We're also going to be using Orzoga Smoked Bear Haunch for our food. It's going to increase our max health and our recovery as much as possible. And as always, Vampire Stage 3 to get that Undeath passive. Undeath passive is absolutely huge. That makes it so that the less health you have, the less damage you take. And overall, I just think that's a really solid bonus to have. We're also going to be using the Shadow as our Munda Stone because that's going to get our crit damage super high and it makes us hit so unbelievably hard. I definitely recommend using Shadow on this. It's really the best way to go in my opinion. So, finally moving on to our gear, our monster set is going to be Balorgs. Balorg on a Nightblade, it goes hand in hand, let's be honest. So, heavy reinforced helmet and medium divine shoulders. Balorg is going to give us a line of weapon and spell damage, as well as when you use an ultimate ability, you're going to gain weapon and spell damage equal to the amount of total ultimate consumed. So, if you use uh, 200 ultimate, you're going to get 200 weapon and spell damage. And then the same exact thing for your penetration as well, except for 23 times as well. So, that is going to be basically... I say that every time I use a Balorg on my videos. So 200 times 23, you're going to be getting an extra 4,600 penetration as well. So overall, that just makes it so you hit so hard for both your ultimate and for the next 12 seconds afterwards as well. So for our front bar set, we're going to be using Order's Wrath. We're going to be using a heavy reinforced chest piece. Order's Wrath is basically just going to give us a bunch of critical. So it's going to increase our critical chance by uh, 657 for on the two piece and the four piece. It's also going to increase our weapon spell damage. It's also going to increase our crit chance again on another five piece line and increases your critical damage and critical healing by 8% as well. So that just makes it so that you're just hitting really hard whenever you're critting. So between Khajiit, also Shadow Mundus, you're just critting a lot. And as you can see, our base crit percentage is 47.3% as well. So that is just absolutely massive. You're critting so much. So between Order's Wrath, Khajiit Passes, and Shadow Mundus, you are hitting very hard. And then also Thracians is going to be our mythic. And yes, I'm on the Thracians meta again. This is just my hype train. This is my Thracians just arc. I've been loving putting this on everything. I've just been trying so many different builds with it. So Thracians, if you have missed it and this is your first time seeing a video with me using Thracians, we're going to be using light uh, well fitted for that. It's going to be our mythic for this build. So what it does is killing an enemy grants you a stack of slowed call for one hour up to a maximum of 50 stacks. Each stack is going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 23, but also reduces your max health by 120, which is why we have so much points into max health. So I'm going to bring my calculator out on my phone just so that, you know, I'm, so you guys know exactly what's going on. So 50 stacks times 23 damage, that's going to increase our weapon and spell damage by 1,150. That is insane amounts of damage you just get your weapon spell damage so high and that's going to make you hit so much harder and on top of that a lot of your heals are going to be based off of that as well so overall you're just hitting really hard and your heals are going to be awesome too without any buffs up your resolving vigor tooltip is at 25.6k that is massive and then also you're going to be losing max health as well so you're going to lose what is it 50 times 120 you're gonna be losing 6,000 health as well. So again, you need to counteract that. And the best way to do that is just point all of your points basically from your attributes into health. And then you have an extra slot in this build so we can fit a line of uh, trainee in there. We're using medium well fitted and trainee, that's just gonna give you an extra line of max health as well. 
Also, Heavy orders Wrath Legs as well, and Medium Divines Boots for Orders Wrath. Our jewelry is going to be Triple Rallying Cry, Triple Infuse, as you can see. Rallying Cry is going to give you a line of crit chance, max magic crit chance, and while Battle Spirit is active, so that means when you're either in uh, Cyrodiil, Battlegrounds, a duel, or an Imperial City, Critically healing yourself or an ally is going to give you 300 weapon spell damage and 1650 critical resist for 20 seconds. So it makes it so your weapon spell damage is higher and your critical resist gets higher as well. So it's a great set. It's a really meta set. Everybody's running it basically. And it just really helps us so that on this build, you're just kind of pushing past everybody else that's using Rallying Cry as well with how much crit percentage we have. And then moving on, we also are using Axes of Orders Wrath. Our main hand is going to be Nernhorn with a shock damage enchantment on it, and our offhand is going to be Precise with a disease enchantment on it. So Axes are gonna increase our overall critical damage as well. So we are just really leaning into that critical damage on this build. And then Rallying Cry Ice Staff is going to be our back bar, defending with an increased weapon and spell damage enchantment on it as well. So I'm going to go over the champion points before I get to the skills because the skills are pretty small over there and I just really like using that in a different screen entirely. So our blue slotables are going to be Focus Mending, Mastered Arms, Untamed Aggression, and Fighting Finesse. Our red slotables are going to be Survival Instincts, Celerity, Pain's Refuge, and Relentlessness. I really like Relentlessness on this build. I really wanted to have an extra source of tankiness on this build and this was the best way to do it in my opinion. And then also for a green tree, the ones I really care about are Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, and do not forget about Breakfall right here as well. Do not forget about that. Please, 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 please. All right, so let's look at our skills real quick. So our main spammable, as always, is going to be Concealed Weapon. It is a multifaceted skill. It is so strong. And then on top of that, when you uh, leave Major Expedition, you're also going to get a Major Berserk when you activate this. So it's going to increase your damage by 10%. So that's huge for your damage as well. And also, just by having the slaughter, you're going to get Minor Expedition. So you can be fast. And then I've got Camel Hunter on the front bar. The reason why we're using this is because we have Major Savagery and Prophecy. So one thing that I didn't explain earlier is for your Thrasians, if you go into Stealth or, or Crouch at all, you lose all of your stacks. So we're not using the invisible version of Cloak on this build. And in my opinion, it is... It, it kind of is tough sometimes in open field situations. You can't really go anywhere on the Nightblade, but... I still think it's really, really strong because we still have this major savagery and prophecy. And uh, the best way to, I'll, I'll actually explain it in a little bit. Uh, the best way to explain it is gonna be on our back bar. I'll get to that, I promise. So the next skill is going to be power extraction. This is a nice little AOE pressure, but mostly this is gonna be your source of major brutality and sorcery and minor courage. So it's gonna increase your weapon spell damage by 20% and by an extra 215 as well. So that's awesome for your overall damage. Make sure you always have this up because that's gonna increase your overall weapon spell damage, which is in turn gonna increase your damage and increase your heals as well. We're also using Killer's Blade. It's gonna be your execute on this build. So when your enemies are at low health, hit this, and that's a big boom as far as their health bar goes. If you can hit this right, this crits, you get that damage off just right, you're just you're you're able to secure so many kills with this. It's great. And then Merciless Resolve, the most overpowered skill in the game, in my opinion. People are just getting hit so hard with this. My tooltip on this is basically 18k, and that's without my buffs up at all. I don't have my Major Brutality or my Minor Courage up on this at all, and my Balorg isn't even proc yet, so that's my tooltip without most of my buffs up, which is insane. 18k, when you Light Attack or Heavy Attack five times, you're gonna get the you're gonna be able to just shoot this off and basically the best way to combo this is you hit your dawn break you hit your not dawn break i'm sorry you hit your in cap with this and then into merciless evolve most people's health bars are going to go from 100 to zero just that quickly and then as you can see incapacitating strike is going to be your front bar ultimate this is a great way to combo your abilities it is a cheap ultimate and it hits very hard what else can you ask for in life it is just in my opinion the bread and butter of nightblade 
So back bar is where we get a little bit interesting. A lot of it's the same, but we'll get to some different parts in a second. Phantasmal Escape, in my opinion, is one of the best skills in the game as well. There's a lot of things in one. A, it's going to give you major evasion, so it's going to reduce your damage uh, taken from AoEs by 20%. Also, it's going to be your source of a snare removal. So this is going to be removing all snares and immobilizations for you for four seconds and immobile and uh, grant you immunity to them. And on top of that, while active, taking direct damage is going to reduce the cost of your next full dodge by 10%, and that could stack up to a maximum of 100%. So, you know, that, that could give you a free roll dodge in five seconds, basically, which is insane for your damage mitigation. Also, Refreshing Path. This is a multifaceted skill as well. Uh, this is going to be your source of major expedition, minor endurance, and minor intellect. So it's going to increase your movement speed by 30%, as well as increase your stamina and magic recovery by 15. So remember when I talked about earlier how for Concealed Weapon, when you leave major expedition and activating the skill, it's going to give you major berserk. So this is your source of major expedition. When you're in the middle of this and you activate your uh, Concealed Weapon, it's going to increase your overall damage as well and on top of that your recovery is a little bit on the lower side on this build so please make sure you're using this at all times because that minor endurance and minor intellect really saves your recovery as well and it also gives you a nice little heal every one second as well so awesome and then resolving vigor this is on basically every single build in the game it's just a nice five second heal over time and on top of that it gives you minor resolve so it's going to increase your physical and spell resistance by 3k and then Healthy Offering, it's a burst heal. It gets you right up back up to full health really quickly. And on top of that, after casting, you're going to gain Minor Mending for 10 seconds. So it's going to increase your healing done by 8%. And we've got uh, three other heals on this besides Healthy Offering. So it's going to make your other heals hit a lot harder. And then this is where we stray off a little bit. The last two skills between our last skill and our ultimate and our back bar, this is where we're a lot different from normal. So Dark Cloak, this is going to be the non-cloak version of Shadowy Disguise. So this is going to be give you a nice little heal real quick. It's not the biggest heal in the world. It's really actually not a good heal at all. But just by having this slotted on both bars, you're going to get minor protection. So it's going to reduce your overall damage taken by 5%. And between that, the little heal as well, it does actually add up between all of your other heals and it's a great way to just stay alive and then this is my first time ever using the swarming scion ultimate it's the vampire ultimate so basically what you do is you just turn into a giant vampire and while transformed your max health magic and stamina are increased by 10,000. you heal for 20 percent of the damage that you deal and i can see enemies through walls i mean that's probably pretty cool it's my first time doing that so bats are also going to swarm around you and shred enemies that come close to dealing yada 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 magic damage every one second so basically it's a free get out of jail free card. So you're going to get right back up to full health when you activate this. You're not going to be able to take damage for like a second while you're transforming into this. So it's again, it's a great get out of jail free card. On top of that, you are hitting so unbelievably hard in this in this ultimate because you're, all of your regular damage abilities are going off. You're also healing for the damage that you're doing. And on top of that, you're also doing that AOE pressure around you as well, which is huge for your overall healing, damage, all that stuff. I have never used this ultimate before, but guys, you're going to see it a lot more often on my builds. I promise I have been absolutely loving this ultimate. It hits so hard and I can't believe it took me this long to actually use this. And one last tip I'm going to give you guys, because I, this is just one of my things that I've been doing with Thrasians, but I don't think that I've ever actually said it on the, my videos before. So when you activate your Thrasians, one of my best pieces of advice, because if you go into stealth at all, you lose all your stacks. So my best advice is unbind your crouch when you do that. That way you don't accidentally lose all your stacks. I all, I did that once on my first time using Thrasians and my entire chat started making fun of me. So that was fun. <laughs> but also I wanted to show you guys how to build up your stacks very quickly. So if you're in the EP area, I'm gonna show you the fastest way to do this. Every time you hit a siege dummy with these siege targets, you're gonna get a stack. So as you can see, that's three stacks right there. You go over here, shoot that again. That's another three stacks. Oh, usually I get more numbers than that. And then as you can see, just go back and forth between these two areas. 
Just keep on shooting and you'll be getting those stacks in no time. See how many numbers go off just simultaneously so quickly? It's just really easy and it's just overall, just, yeah, see, like we're just getting so many over and over again. And overall, that's just a really solid way to get your stacks up really quickly. It takes two seconds right there. I just got four, that's awesome. And overall, I just, I know that it's kind of a pain to get your Thrasian stacks every time you die, but it's kind of a high risk, high reward kind of thing. Yeah, it sucks dying in this game. Like we're all gonna die in this game. It, it happens. You know, like everybody in this game dies. Like nobody can tell me otherwise, everybody dies. So you just have to take an extra few seconds just to get back into it when you do die. But in my opinion, it is worth it. It's a lot of fun, this build. It hits really hard. As you can see, let me get my Rallying Cry to proc. Uh, Rallying Cry, please proc. Rallying Cry, please proc. Thank you. Before my Major Brutality goes out, I already have 6,000 weapon and spell damage. So that just shows you how high we're going to get into on this build. It is insane. I can't stress enough how much I've been really liking this build. It's actually really strong. So... I'm glad that you guys have been watching the video to the end. If you guys could do me a favor, again, I know I've said it before, but if you can just hit that like on the video, if you are already subscribed, if you're not subscribed, please also hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. And please also subscribe to the channel. We're about to hit 8,400 subscribers, which is huge. So that means we're almost up to that 8,500 mark and just one step closer to hitting 9K. You guys know how it is. I'd appreciate every single person coming out here and subscribing to the channel. That'd be really, really, really cool if y'all could do that. I'd really appreciate that. It's a free way to help support your favorite content creators. But anyway, that's it from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.